Hi there. Real quick before we jump into the episode. If you enjoy this episode or any of the other episodes, be sure to give us a follow or subscribe. It would also be great if you shared it with a friend or better yet, left a review so others can know how awesome it is. Thanks so much. And now, the episode. Hey there, Press Starters, and welcome to the Press Start Leadership Podcast, the podcast about game-changing leadership, teaching you how to get the most out of your product and development team and become the leader you were meant to be. Leadership coaching and training for the international game industry professional. Now, let me introduce you to your host, the man, the myth, the legend, Christopher Mifsud. Hey there, Press Starters, and welcome back to another awesome edition of the Press Start Leadership Podcast. On this week's episode, we'll be discussing Game On, the ultimate guide to asset naming conventions in video game development. Best practices for organizing and streamlining your workflow with consistent and descriptive asset names. Asset naming conventions are a crucial part of any video game development process. Consistent and organized naming convention can help streamline the workflow and make it easier for the team to find and identify assets. In this podcast, we will discuss some of the best practices for asset naming conventions in the video game industry. Up first, consistency. The first and most important aspect of asset naming conventions is consistency. All members of the team, including artists, programmers, and designers, must adhere to the same naming convention throughout the entire project. This will prevent confusion and ensure that everyone can quickly identify the assets they need. Up next, clarity and descriptiveness. The second aspect of asset naming conventions is clarity and descriptiveness. Asset names should be simple, clear, and descriptive so that anyone looking at them can quickly understand what the asset is and what it does. The name should accurately describe the asset and its purpose. Avoid using vague or generic names that can cause confusion or misinterpretation. Third up, use prefixes and suffixes. Using prefixes and suffixes is a great way to organize assets in the categories and groups. This can make it easier for team members to find the assets they need. For example, you could use char underscore as a prefix for character assets, env underscore for environment assets, and ui underscore for user interface assets. This naming convention will make it easier to identify what type of assets you are looking for. Number four, use abbreviations. Using abbreviations can save time and reduce the length of asset names. However, it is essential to ensure the abbreviations are well known and understood by all team members. Some commonly used abbreviations in the video game industry include TEX underscore for texture assets, ANIM underscore for animation assets, and SND underscore for sound assets. When using abbreviations, make sure they are consistent throughout the project. See number one. 5. Use numbers. Using numbers is an excellent way to differentiate between similar assets. For example, use tree underscore zero 01 for the first tree asset and tree underscore zero 02 for the second tree asset, and so on. This is particularly useful when creating variations of the same asset, such as different levels of detail or color variations. Up next, use underscores. Underscores are used to separate words and asset names, making them easier to read and understand. For example, use rock underscore large instead of rock large to make it easier to read. Using underscores also helps prevent any potential issues with spaces and file names. Avoid spaces. Spaces can cause issues with some software when creating file names, so it is best to avoid them. Instead, Use underscores, as I just said, to separate words in asset names. This will ensure that the asset names are compatible with all software used in the development process. Use lowercase. 
Using lowercase for all asset names will prevent any potential issues with case sensitivity. This is particularly important when working on different platforms, as some platforms may be case sensitive. Be specific. Asset names should be as specific as possible, particularly when creating multiple variations of the same asset. For example, use sword underscore long instead of sword to differentiate it from other swords in the game. This will make it easier for team members to find the asset they need. Keep it short. Finally, it is important to keep asset names as short as possible without sacrificing clarity. Shorter names are easier to read and remember, and they take up less space in file directories. Aim for names that are no longer than 20 to 30 characters, while still accurately describing the asset. My final thoughts. Asset naming conventions are a crucial aspect of video game development that can help streamline the workflow and make it easier for team members to find and identify assets. Consistency, clarity, and organization are key when creating asset names. Using prefixes, suffixes, abbreviations, numbers, and underscores can all help create a naming convention that is easy to understand and use. Keeping asset names short and specific is also important as it can help prevent confusion and make it easier to find what you need. By following these best practices, you can create a naming convention that will help you stay organized and efficient throughout the entire game development process. All right, that's this week's episode of Press Start Leadership Podcast. As always, thanks for listening, and most of all, thanks for being awesome. Hey there, press starters. Conversations with Christopher is coming back, and we need you. If you're a veteran leader in the video game industry and have years of experience and wisdom to share, we want to hear from you. Share your insights and knowledge on topics such as team management, project leadership, industry trends, and more. Your unique perspective can be a valuable resource for aspiring leaders and those new to the industry. If you're a new leader in the video game industry, we want to hear from you too. Share your experiences as you navigate your way through a new role the challenges you faced, and the successes you've achieved. Your insights can provide inspiration and guidance to others who are just starting their leadership journey. And if you're an aspiring leader looking for advice, this is the perfect opportunity for you to ask questions to an industry expert. Whether you're looking for advice on how to get started in the industry, how to advance your career, or how to overcome obstacles, this is your chance to get answers from someone who has been there. So, if you're interested in being a part of the conversation, Reach out to Christopher, that's me, at Christopher at PressStartLeadership.com. Let us know a little bit about yourself and what you'd like to talk about, and we'll be in touch to schedule a time for the conversation. In addition to sharing your leadership insights and experiences, we want to offer you the opportunity to promote your company, book, open positions, or anything else you'd like to share with our thousands of listeners. This is a chance to showcase your brand and let people know what you and your company are all about. So, whether you're promoting a new game release, a job opening at your studio, or your latest book, this is your chance to get the word out to a wide audience of video game industry professionals and enthusiasts. We believe that conversations with industry leaders are an important way to help others learn and grow, and we're excited to offer this platform to you. So don't miss out on this opportunity to share your wisdom, promote your brand, and connect with others in the video game industry. That's right. Email me, Christopher, at Christopher at PressStartLeadership.com to schedule a conversation today. We can't wait to hear from you.